In a land called the Osage Territory, as May comes along, taller plants grow and overshadow these little flowers, making them disappear. This is called the time of the flower killing moon. Our main character, Molly Burkhardt, lives in this land and has a sister named Anna, who loves having wild adventures. One day Anna goes missing. The Osage tribe found out that they were sitting on top of lots of oil. Suddenly they became super rich. But with great treasure comes great terror. People from outside started looking at them. Now Molly is married to Ernest Burkhardt, who is not from the Osage tribe. They love each other a lot, but not everyone is happy about it. People had this idea that everyone should stick to their own group. One day Anna, after a night of wild fun, disappears. Molly gets really worried. After a while, they find Anna's body. It turns out someone hurt her, and they find more people from the Osage tribe who were hurt too. The Osage people are terrified because these bad things keep happening, and they don't know who to trust. The situation becomes so bad that people are even scared of their neighbors and friends. Everyone is wondering, who's next? These mysterious and scary events are called the Osage Reign of Terror. It's a dark and scary chapter in the land's history. The Osage tribe is so worried, they ask the big boss, the federal government, to send special investigators to figure out what's going on. So after all the mysterious events and fear in the land, an agent named Tom White enters the scene. He's a detective summoned by J. Edgar Hoover, the big boss, who wants to make things right in the Bureau of Investigation. Tom White is a tough old-style lawman. He's been around since the frontier days, like a cowboy with a badge. Now, J. Edgar Hoover, the big boss, wants to modernize the Bureau of Investigation and avoids any bad rumors. The Osage murder mystery is a big problem that could make the Bureau look bad. Tom White dives into the case. He starts by looking at all the files the Bureau has on the Osage murders. He suspects there might be a sneaky spy inside the investigation, leaking secrets to the bad guys. As he digs deeper, he discovers something interesting about Anna Brown's body. You see, when someone passes away, the blood usually goes to the lower part of the body. If it's found in higher places, it means the body might have been moved. This clue makes Tom White think some people might be lying. The Osage murders weren't done by just one person. It was like a team of bad guys working for a mastermind. This mastermind was super smart, planning everything carefully over the years. There's a twist in the story too. Brian Burkhardt, a relative of our hero, Molly, confesses to being part of the bad things that happened to Anna Brown. He even pretended to be sad when they found Anna's body, but he was actually one of the people who hurt her. As the investigation unfolds, they find out that some people like Hale benefited from bad things that happened. The adventure doesn't end here. There are hints that there's an even bigger, darker secret waiting to be discovered, and Tom White needs to find it to bring peace back to the Osage territory. Fast forward to the year 2012, and the once lively Osage region has changed a lot. The big oil companies, tall derricks, and bustling boom towns are mostly gone. But Pahuska, like a time capsule, still stands as the capital of the Osage nation, holding memories of the past. Now, our storyteller David Grant becomes a character in our tale. He visits Pahuska, hoping to unveil the secrets of the almost century-old Osage murder cases. David meets Catherine Redcorn the director of the Osage Nation Museum, who shares the deep impact the reign of terror had on the Osage community. In the museum, David sees photographs of many victims from that dark time. There's a special panoramic photo from 1924, but a part of it is missing. Catherine reveals that this missing piece was deliberately removed to erase the image of William K. Hale, the mastermind behind the murders. The Osage people continue their ceremonial dances in June, keeping their traditions alive. During one of these dances, 
David meets Margie Burkhardt, the granddaughter of Molly and Ernest Burkhardt. Margie shares the challenges her family faced because of Ernest, who was involved in the crimes. She tells David about her father, James Cowboy Burkhardt, and the tough times he had knowing about the crimes of his father, Ernest. Despite the pain, Cowboy occasionally visited Ernest after he was released from prison. Ernest, once a part of the crime, came back to Osage County and lived a quiet life. It's like he changed from a villain to a regular person, a stark contrast to his earlier life of wealth and crime. The Great Depression and the oil fields running out of magic significantly affected the Osage people's wealth, but they found new sources of income such as casinos and managed to get back some of the oil funds that were stolen by the U.S. government. Margie takes David to an old cemetery in Grey Horse, where many victims of the Reign of Terror, including her relatives, are laid to rest. The graves stand as a solemn reminder of the dark chapter in Osage history. The crimes of Ernest weighed heavily on his family. Cowboy and Aunt Liz face isolation from the Osage community. The trauma ran deep, with Liz even changing her address and phone number frequently out of fear. David's journey teaches us the importance of uncovering and understanding the past. While some mysteries are solved, others remain, hinting at deeper layers of conspiracy yet to be uncovered.